All right, everyone, welcome to Q Talks, a podcast series by QTech, the Cambridge University of Technology and Enterprise Club. I'm Edward. I'm Tele, and we'll be your host for this evening. And we're so happy to have Kate Hamer and Louis Saha here with us for this event. The format of this is a relaxed chat, throughout which we'll be in conversation with Louis and Kate and answering your questions. Please do write any questions that you have in the chat box throughout the session and we'll do our best to get them answered as we go along. This fireside chat is presented to you by the Cambridge University Technology and Enterprise Club, or QTech in short. QTech is one of the largest entrepreneurship societies here at the University of Cambridge. And please do check our other activities at www.qtech.io. Q Talks by QTech is a leading how-to podcast series for tech founders and aspiring innovators. We have had some incredible guests so far, including founders, investors, and experts from Cambridge and beyond. Today, we're talking to Louis Saha and Kate Hamer, co-founders of Access Stars, a platform to help sports and entertainment stars foray into the business world. Louis is a former professional footballer who has played for Manchester United, Fulham, Everton, and the French national team, and is the author of the book, Thinking Inside the Box. Kate has over a decade of experience working in digital marketing for multinational firms such as L'Oreal, Walt Disney, and currently has her own marketing and digital consulting company. Hi, Kate and Louis. Thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to talk to you about your background, how and why Access Stars was born, and the journey to bring it to fruition. So to start off, um, Louis, could you give us a general overview of your background and how you got here today? So yes, I, I had the chance to have a football career, uh, mainly in England, but I started in France, uh, where uh, I played uh, a few years there uh, with the academic process. And then, uh, as I said, I was uh, lucky enough to play in the Premier League, uh, represent my country, a few caps there, uh, with a World Cup and European Championship. Um, managed to finish my career in Italy, so broadly um, understood the actual environment of uh, athletes and, and professional environments. Um, so the idea of Axis Stars came up with uh, my own experience, obviously, collecting ideas and, and, and stories from other players or other sportsmen. Find out that uh, it was really difficult to get the right support, the right people, the right trust. So all those things were um, so down to your entourage and sometimes uh, it was good, sometimes it was bad. Uh, you make those changes and you, have been, you don't have the actual um, ways um, or simple platform to actually uh, get the right information spread. So I uh, came up with uh, Axis Stars and that's why uh, I had the chance as well to, to work with uh, Kate. Um, along the day, uh, we managed to grow um, our understanding, uh, understanding of how this industry works and how uh, you know solution can be really uh, helpful for the for the industry. So this is basically my background. Very passionate uh, about uh, innovation. Yes, thanks, Louis, for sharing more about your background. I'm pretty sure most of our audience here are aware of your career. Uh, we would also like to you know learn more about Kate, the other co-founder of Access Stars, about uh, your personal background, Kate, and also how did you and Louis met in the beginning of uh, you know finding Access Stars? Okay, cool. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I am a marketer, as you said in your introduction. So I did um, international business in French was what I studied at uni, and then I started at Orange when that existed in the UK. Now it's EE, the bits of it that remain, but I was there for about seven years working in all kinds of different areas of marketing and towards the end of my time there worked on the intranet and WAP um, that was um, sort of the very early internet on phones and that kind of thing. So that's when I started to get into tech. Uh, then I went to Unilever where I managed the Tesco.com and Asda.com business and was working with Tesco on their new e-commerce site and the future of shopping online and that kind of thing so really really got into digital from that point at Disney store I was in their e-commerce team so again looking at 
how e-com works, how you can convert people, drive traffic, etc. And then um, I sort of ended my corporate career, I guess, at L'Oreal, where I was digital director there for all of their consumer products brands. So Maybelline, SC, Garnier, Sofshi and Carson and L'Oreal Paris. Um, and then, yeah, I thought five years ago that the way that digital transformation was happening, if I wanted to be a consultant around digital transformation projects, that I needed to act quickly because everybody would be digitally transformed and there'd be nothing for me to consult on. But five years on, I see that there's still a lot of companies that need help and support in that way. So, um, yeah, I started my own business and that obviously enabled me to kind of choose the different projects and things that I wanted to work on. I'm a big, I am a big football fan, but I support Sheffield Wednesday. So the definition of football and Sheffield Wednesday, I'm not so sure if I can really say that I'm a football fan supporting them. But um, yeah, I started to work in more sort of sports projects and did some work with FIFA and Spurs and various companies like that. Um, and I actually read an article that Louis had been interviewed in the Guardian newspaper uh, about three years ago and um, I read it and basically whenever I read anything about anyone that I think could be interesting to work with or could be a useful partner for Access Stars or whatever I'll look on LinkedIn and see if that person is on there and there was a Louis Saar on LinkedIn but I was thinking oh, it's probably like some sort of fake person pretending to be him um, but I sent him a message anyway and then he replied and I thought oh yeah this will definitely be a fake um, but he'd suggested having a chat and I thought, well, I'll call this person's bluff, even if it's not him. And then it turned out to be him. So, uh, we had quite a long initial chat and then met up and we're talking more about his vision for Axis Stars, which I fully, uh, believed in and engaged with. And so I ended up becoming part of the business rather than I'd initially got in touch thinking I might do a bit of consultancy work or something, but yeah, now I'm living and breathing Axis Stars. Um, and yeah, so can we get an idea of exactly what Access Stars does then from you, Lou and Kate? So basically, as a as a stars, you, as I said, I explained that you struggle to get the right people around you. So app, there is an environment that we built, but uh, it's to build a community. The app allows uh, pro athletes. Uh, and artists to be in a safe environment. So basically they enter, they can actually put their, their profile up a little bit like LinkedIn, let's say, um, where you could put your interest. So it could be fashion, it could be real estate, finance, business, it could be tech, it could be anything that you, you can imagine. Those are um, topics that can help the, in the background. Uh, the partners that we have vetted, so they go through a due diligence, making sure that they are the right ones. This is what is really hard for a young boy of 20 or 25 to actually look at details about bios, about people, uh, experiences and all that. So that's what we do and making sure that those people understand that they, they, they have to propose some really uh, nice uh, product or services to make sure that uh, is in line with the, the clientele that we have, and we call them uh, members. And what happened then on the background, I say every partner has their back office uh, and they can publish opportunities directly to the phone. Why we say indirect is very important is because the intermediary world is always sometimes uh, a barrier to uh, direct information. Those guys need the information by themselves. They can make a bit more decision by themselves educate by themselves, uh, them to have more confidence. And this is all about the education process that we want to, to give those guys during their career and not after when it's too late, when they have to actually now uh, explode the bubble because they, they have the surprise of like, I don't know, like uh, uh, all the bad choices they've done during the career. So we provide a tool that they have for seven in the hand where they can have, like, as I said, some really nice opportunities, some like uh, extra uh, revenue uh, and some really nice profile, some network 
that they can do, whether it could be stars that they can actually keep for life or partners that they can trust because they have been reviewed and uh, put in a configuration that they, they will be rated by the stars. So this is a really unique uh, proposition for this uh, industry uh, or those ecosystems are very complex and we try to actually facilitate everything. Okay, great. And on that note, so traditionally agents tend to be really heavily involved in the lives of their clients. So just wondering exactly how Access House fits into that existing relationship and have there been the agents of some of your members who have felt bypassed to some extent? Yeah, yeah. we, we, we have uh, obviously the first, I would say, um, impression uh, will be, oh, hang on a minute, they, they, they have that kind of uh, uh, position into that uh, ecosystem, but we are a complementary tool for them. So basically, if they are in the market with a lot of competitors, so a lot of agents for a thousand players, you have a thousand agents. So imagine. So what we propose or what we offer as in Axis Stars, um, it's to actually have that sense of legitimization straight away because they have been reviewed, because also as well, they are open-minded to actually uh, show their, their, their ways of like trying to be very transparent. So it really helped those clients that they have to actually understand that those uh, agents are the real deal. Um, so this is the first. Obviously the second, uh, it's like having access now to a network that they may don't have in direct, so they can actually maybe propose their services to this uh, audience. So all those things are features. Obviously at first, when they don't know, the normal reaction is to actually be careful because they don't want to have maybe uh, uh, done the, the, the wrong move in some way if they are not so transparent. But that's the aim of Access Stars is to make a new standard um, and, and, and help the education of everybody, not only the partners, but as well the stars, because some stars of sports and, and the entertainers, they, they, they tend to be very, I would say, used to a certain comfort. They don't do much or they don't uh, try to inform them, them themselves. They just listen to one or two advice or something like this. Now to have that kind of like interaction, direct interaction can help both parties to educate themselves. So obviously take times. And this is why the actual combination of uh, Kate and I, uh, she's got way more experience in the corporate world than me and have that experience of how to communicate with those uh, players or athletes. And um, so this is where we really facilitate uh, in a unique way. I guess speaking about the two parties, um, one is stars and the other one is, um, I guess, partners or sponsors, we would like to perhaps try to understand better how is the dynamic of this relationship um, is taking place in Access Stars. For example, uh, maybe this could go to Kate. Could you share with the audience about what sort of partners do you typically work with and what sort of partnerships are formed in between stars and sponsors in Access Stars? Yeah, so I think really, the, so part of the way that the community kind of interacts with Access Stars is through an app. Um, and this app has infinite possibilities because, as Louis said, a star creates their profile. So they say what it is that they're interested in, obviously what their industry is. So it could be sports, it could be entertainment, whatever they might be, rugby player, comedian, etc. And then by virtue of the things that they have set in their profile, they will see different listings from companies. So that means that we can have quite a range of different companies in there. So when it comes to kind of products, you know, there's, there's fashion, there's real estate, there's holidays, um, cars, but you can have the, the top end cars of Bentleys and things that would be being of appeal to Premier League footballers, but then you can have great deals on an Audi or a Golf that would be more relevant to, you know, people just starting their career or different, um, different careers where the, the pay isn't so high, etc. So lots of different products from a, a sort of brand ambassador um, seeding product opportunity. You know, we've got big 
umbrella companies in there that have got multiple brands, you know, FMCG type companies that want to seed product out. Uh, the big advantage of that is that what you would normally do if you were, you know, say when I was working at L'Oreal, if we were launching a new product, you'd kind of speculatively send that product out to different people within the public eye, hoping that one, it would get to them because you'd probably have to send it to their agent or whatever. And two, that if it did get to them, they'd actually use it and they'd have something to say about it. Whereas with Axis Stars, they can list it saying who wants to try this new product. So straight away, a star has actually actively raised their hand and said, I'm interested in that. So they're expecting it when it arrives. They're much more likely to talk about it on social media, etc. Um, but then there are bigger, you know, people looking for brand ambassadors. There are broadcasters that need guests and pundits there are companies uh, like classic football shirts that will buy an entire shirt collection from a player but in a discreet way so that it's not going to look like oh gosh they've ended on hard times or whatever they've just sold all of their shirts um and then the final section is around experts so you know lawyers wealth managers nutritionists pas performance coaches a whole range of different um experts that are in there and every company that goes into the platform is checked through our admissions and ethics committee so that's where we bring in that trust element and you know stars know that anybody that's within access stars is not going to um you know be untrustworthy or give them a bad deal or whatever because they've been through the experts on our committee this is interesting can we safely say that access stars sort of democratizes relationships between i guess stars and partners because the tendency that we always think is, is that typically it will be the companies who approach you know the stars actively whereas with access stars it seems like stars could now proactively look for opportunities by themselves yeah yes. so it's definitely a, a win-win two-way platform i think we were speaking to someone a couple of years ago and they were talking about how you know your mobile phone is like a transparency passport really and a lot of things have improved as a result of people having access to all those different things um just in the palm of their hand quite literally so um yeah absolutely it means that there is more opportunity for stars to be informed and educate themselves about the options that are out there you know like we've said you still may need an agent or a brand director or whatever to help you actually do the things that you want to do but at least you're getting visibility of it yourself and can assess uh what you think yeah great and it looks like a very well thought out process the way members use the app and how they can approach partners and the reciprocal relationship so i believe you launched the app last summer so how many sort of members have you gained since then and how's your reputation growing in the sporting world as this sort of new innovative way for um for you know sports stars to um approach partnerships yeah so i think um as you said we launched late last summer we kind of brought smaller groups of people into it initially to test it out and to give us feedback about different things and you know, no matter how much you think through these things, it's always once you get the users in and you start to see the data and the insight that you learn other things or, you know, things that you sort of took for granted because you've been working on the project for years, you think, oh, okay, I can see why a user might think X, Y, or Z. So um, we're at just over 300 members now. Um, I mean, we, you know, when people say about, oh, how has lockdown impacted you? There's sort of good things and bad things. You know, it is right that as a result of lockdown, a lot of um, both sports and entertainment stars obviously weren't working right at the start of it. And so they have more time to be sitting at home and thinking about um, what they were doing and how they needed to plan for the future and stuff. And so that obviously opened up the possibility for us to be having more conversations with those sort of people. But then at the same time, you know, it, there's not been the same kind of dressing room discussions and things that would have sped it up in terms of word of mouth. But um, certainly we're getting very positive feedback from the people that are using it. And um, football is our biggest chunk of membership, um, followed by rugby. 
that we're, we're learning as we go into each of these different areas like rugby, cricket, athletics. We, we're bringing smaller pools of people in to find out what it is they need, how they'd use it, et cetera, and then can build out from there. Cool. It's been great to talk to you about the amazing work you're both doing with Access Stars right now. And I think maybe now if we look back at the journey of starting Access Stars in a way and kind of how you've both found running Access Stars alongside your current, your other endeavors because you're both clearly very busy people. So yeah, we just want to know, I mean, firstly, how you have found running Access Stars along with the other things you do. Louis? So in, in a way that um, we are both very passionate, um, honestly, <laughs> it's uh, day and night. Um, I would think that uh, basically all the, the, um, the resources we have, we have like put it into it because we are such believers uh, of such a program because it's not gonna, oh, for me, uh, this is what I'm saying, but this is not going to help uh, a few people. This is going to help like uh, not only a few players. It's not going to help uh, a few sportsmen um, or artists. Uh, it can have like uh, such an influence in creating new standard that we have like to sacrifice. I would I would say this is the word to sacrifice um, a lot of time to build this uh, data so information to build uh, this confidence um, based on branding, based on, on uh, I would say, partnership, all this credibility that you need to get from discussion to discussion. So it takes enormous amount of time and, 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 and passion that people need to feel. So all those things need to, needed to be organized um, uh, through step by step. So all those things in terms of combination of like one sportsman uh, or ex sportsman, um, then with a, a business a woman, when all those things are not super easy uh, in terms of like startups and, and, and all those things. So it, it was really a, a very interesting journey. And, and and we learn every day, and this is what I, I think I I really um, say that uh, for for the most important element that uh, I bring in into that is the the desire. Every day uh, we had that kind of like drive, and I, I don't know, but uh, for anyone who's going to an exam and all that, it's about like future that you see through the the exam when you got the diploma. You expect to be whatever, like, I don't know, a big lawyer or, or an engineer, I know that this is the, this vision that drives you to do all those uh, homework and then and, and also we, we, we are now in, in that moment where we think that we have done all our homework um, and uh, it's this moment where all those work, all those hours, all those sacrifice, all those uh, walls that we take and maybe uh, 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 broke our nose uh, in some way, in a way we wanted to learn, uh, makes sense now, even more. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will say that um, maybe Kate will choose different words, but uh, in terms of like explaining the journey, how we build it, it's from having no fear in like going into meetings and, uh, and, and challenge uh, people who have like certain ideas or certain principles um, come back to them and, and, and make them more comfortable our, our ideas because it's quite um, avant-garde, I don't know if it's the right word, but uh, kind of for some industries, it's quite old school. I'm telling you, uh, people think that it makes sense. Uh, yes, it does, but uh, we talk about it uh, briefly before when we talk about uh, uh, sport director for Man United. There is like obvious choices, you know, yes, but uh, within industries, it's nothing is simple. Believe me, it's like absolutely nothing is simple. People have like uh, got uh, old mortgages. They have planned for five years of stuff. They, they they don't want people to come and change that habit, you know, or change uh, those uh, those those plans. So we had we had to really uh, use our strategy our head every every day. So it was really interesting for especially me who was maybe not as the same background as Kate or differently, but um, 
we we learn uh, over the years and from both sides, I think. And I don't know if I answered correctly the question. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that is very insightful. I especially like your quote on the importance of you know learning every day, and I think that is very you know aligned with our society's mission. Um, I was wondering if maybe you both could also share more a bit about some of the experiences that you've learned. For example, in terms of running access tasks, was this app the first thing that came into your mind when, when you first started it? Or were, were there like any pivots along the way, if you don't mind sharing some of that with us? Yes, in terms of process where um, it's a, obviously it's like it's a, my own experience, but uh, with like like total honesty and humility, I don't think like I came up with something like uh, nobody has thought about. It's just like it's such a difficult project that people get overwhelmed and say, "Oh no, it's like it's too difficult and it's no no possible to change anything." So uh, with fatality, no one moved. No one is uh, uh, eager to do anything. What happened is like I wrote my my book. My, it's like a guide. I wanted to write for for my my brother and people who wanted to. Uh, go into that journey more about like talking about every single thing that they could face you know to make them aware of those things and, and all that and and basically had a really good response but obviously you know people starting to drift away from reading books you know and I felt that that era of like digital was perfect to to actually share this journey so that's why we built access stars in a way to actually implement all that kind of let's say information uh, uh, and, and get that interaction, direct interaction, because during my career, I didn't feel like even if I was in a dressing room, that I was like really connected to those guys. So basically we could be friends and two or three or four from the team, but we don't share uh, good or bad stories in terms of like management, in terms of like uh, investment, all those things, you know? So I, I thought it was like, uh, uh, a thing that should be done by unions, like they should be here to protect the players or educate them and that, but they do pretty much like every single thing is to be said that are good, but they don't communicate correctly. They don't give access uh, correctly. So all those things were uh, here to be taken as a niche market, as a maybe like a very young retired uh, professional to, to say, let's do something about this. And, and that's what was the first thing is to create that of like a uh, um, tool. So the app obviously that uh, allowed those guys to create a community. So the first step was to actually put a safe environment where they have the actual um, uh, use every day. So having an app, it's uh, the modern day where has a use in his Instagram and all this because this is the only way to get uh, the control in an app in your hands with all the information, with all the kind of like opportunities and you make your own choices. You can learn your own, on your own terms and your own times. This is where you get that kind of, uh, I would say, say control back. And, and, and fair enough, it's a still a not easy process for people to understand that we're giving all this to, to, to those stars. But uh, what was really then important in the second phase is to understand that there is operation. What is like step-by-step, step, what is like very important inside the app. So this was uh, very important three years, three years and a half ago, talking to Kate and, and, and getting those things sorted, organized in a nice way for having not only an app, but a community that can interact. So partners and staffs that have as well a sense of uh, results. So getting deals done, getting transaction done, getting information done, uh, th those are as much important as the app. And those things uh, come with experiences, comes with uh, feedback from partners, feedback from, from stars. So it's an enormous work. I mean, like it's people will think, oh yes, it's like, it's out there. I think when you look at maybe Apple success, let's say with uh, not trying to compare, but Apple didn't invent internet or didn't invent mobile phones, but they done it in a certain way that was simpler, was like making things like so obvious 
that oh yes he it was supposed to be like this that's that's the actual formula of apple and that's why they are so so successful in the world of sports and the, the world of like uh elite sports uh, people you have to do something very similar because they're used to apple style and that was really uh archie for us who wanted to give educate those guys um uh, as, as much as we want, but we couldn't do that. We have to really address a message that fit those guys. It could be more video, it could be more uh, small snaps uh, in, ter in terms of like uh, information and stuff like this. So all those things was a lot of discussion between Kate and I, and this is the kind of insight we can give you like this, but uh, we, we, can, we, we can leave you uh, for weeks about all the discussion we have. <laughs> So it was like enormous work and it's still uh, the case right now. That's a very interesting backstory. Um, I, I think stars, just like humans, have inertia, right? And people tend to not like changes. It's a bit yeah. hard if you sort of throw them a new app and ask them to learn new things. They probably will not want to adapt. And I think this is also related to one topic that we are very interested in, which is to build community. You mentioned before, at least Louis, uh, about how stars were not too sure because uh, in the past, like their managers probably take care of everything that they do. But now you sort of build a new community where people are expected to be proactive. Maybe both you, Kate and Louis, if you have any insights as to what are some of the challenges that you first had when you built this new community from scratch, I would say, right? Really, when you're building any sort of community, you've got to look at it from the point of view of the people that you want to join it and what is it that they're looking for. And I think that's probably one of the things that is a little bit tricky with Axis Stars in that if I've got any sort of individual in front of me, I can explain to them why it makes sense for them. So, you know, a Premier League footballer, the footballer at the peak of their career is going to use Axis Stars in a different way to a rugby player who's been retired for five years, for example. So getting that kind of all-encompassing one-liner that everybody can just read and be like, oh yeah, I want to join that community, is harder than the kind of more targeted communication to all the different parts of that community. And its strength comes from the fact that it is diverse and you've got a whole range of different professional stars in there and different stages of their career and they can obviously help each other and mentor and all those kind of things but it's tapping into what is the sort of value that someone is going to get from that community why should they join it and you know just by the very nature of the word community it's about them putting something in as well as taking something out so it's you know getting that across has been quite key and I think that's where particularly during lockdown when we've been able to start doing you know webinars where we've got not just experts on the panels but stars validating the theory and practice from the experts and that kind of thing really then starts to show what access stars is about and i think the more we can demonstrate it the more that brings the community together and people want to be involved oh louis pictures disappeared any other thoughts, Louis, on that? Yeah, I think you. Know, I think you resume this uh, situation. As we are not mass market, we are very targeted. Uh, those engines are like in their head uh, less time because they have been accustomed by the environment. A lot of pressure, a lot of uh, responsibilities. Very young. All those uh, situations make them like erratic in decision, sometimes they are playing well, sometimes they're not, they're being criticized. So all this is really an environment people think that is super easy because uh, visually or what they see on papers, it's all about like having like massive salaries and all that. Uh, not everyone is the same. Unfortunately, from one team to another, from one club or one sport to another, it's not the same. So we can't address the same message because those guys, as Kate explained, are simply not the same. There are some are really into like, yeah, education. Some are into um, really be uh, super lazy and, and, and enjoy the life. And, and at the same time, we need to have that kind of like 
we have for you as well, you know, because at some point, maybe things will change. You have like maybe kids at some point, you may have like some injuries at some point, you may have some project at some point, and all those things are within Axistas. We are able to actually create a journey for you with certain type of information for you. And this is how we build this community with that sense of like always having those uh, members at the center of, of every thought. It's not easy because we're not everybody. We don't know everybody. We can't speak the same language of everybody. So it's quite a challenge, but we, we get in there. Yeah, I knew you're talking. So you're talking about speaking the same language. So obviously your background as a football player is useful in communicating with some of the members you work with. And we're just wondering, maybe on more of the business side of things, um, have your experiences as a player helped you in any way? Has there been any transferable skills that have helped you navigate the business world? And has working with you know, big characters such as Sir Alex Ferguson over the course of your career had any influence on your management approach in business? Uh, definitely. If I, if I look at uh, what he brought uh, on the table for me as a, just a human being, Yes, that uh, authenticity is the first thing. Basically, as we say about the first thing was the drive. Uh, these guys has like a really authentic drive. I mean, like he want to win. So I have the same drive. I want to improve. I want to win. I want to, to, to get uh, results in a way that if I do some really hard work, sacrifice days and nights and all that, I need results. So I will do anything for it in, in, a, in a very authentic way. What I'm saying this is like, I know myself and I know Kate, every single thing that we want to do is address one word is integrity or transparency, all those things. So I know it's myself and I feel good about it. If it was about like getting a lot of money, I would be doing another job. I would be an agent, I would be a banker or whatever it is, but uh, I, won't be, I wouldn't be doing this uh, amount of sacrifice uh, unless I felt really in line with what was or what could be the results. It's helping a lot of uh, 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 sh chat. Obviously, it's not a charity, but we, we do have that sense of like, uh, we know we're going to bring something on the table. And this is what Sir Alex Ferguson always, like even if it could be right or wrong, it was all about like getting results. He, he admits like, he can make mistakes in the way he talked to you. And this is what I think in business are really... Uh, never lost. Even sometimes you could have bad days, you could have like facing someone who's going to waste your time and, and ask you autograph when you want to sign some contract, <laughs> you know, and that's, that was not very important because at the end of the day, when you really feel like you're still going forward, it's fine. So having that drive uh, that Sir Alex Ferguson had, um, uh, I think was amazing for me because um, uh, even he doesn't realize now, I don't speak to him that much apart from last year, but um, he had a massive impact of, like I would say, three quarter or all the players that he, he, he crossed because of this intensity and, and really authentic drive. And uh, I really thank uh, him for that. And, and, and then obviously uh, when you, you work day and night, uh, you have to, to, to find the right uh, kind of energy with the people you work with. So it's, it's not easy because sometimes you could get uh, into, uh, uh, yes, like differences like of opinion and all that. And in business, it's different timing. In sport, I was in charge. Basically, I know my body. If a manager tell me, basically, I want you to score goals. I want you to do this or to do that. I knew that I need to work harder than anyone I see. And, and basically, I will improve and uh, I will get there. And, and in business, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. It takes more time. Uh, it takes more, um, yeah, let's say, being diplomatic in some way, which is something I didn't totally uh, need to do uh, when I was a player. I score goals, I, I tackle, I, I give elbows when I'm not happy. And, and, and it was... And it was working fine for me and uh, had a quite successful career based on my, on, my, um, on my focus on my quality. 
where those it's not about only qualities about how to actually understand to unlock situation that's that's it you have to unlock and that's not maybe your strength to unlock you have to have someone else to do it and it's more strategy and and, and, and stuff and, and business is is more tricky i would say so this is where i think uh, we have uh, kate uh, who can actually complement what i say uh, i really think that we are complementary So I guess speaking about Sir Alex Ferguson and the influence that he's had for you, I think in general, this is also related to one of the other topics that we are very interested in, which is to find mentors in your career. I mean, Rui, you've spoken about Sir Alex Ferguson as one of your you know, most influential mentor. We were wondering, Kate, if you also have a similar figure in your life, perhaps in your previous career or your existing work. Um... I don't know. I wouldn't say there was necessarily one person. I mean, I think um, my parents certainly were very entrepreneurial. So they were teachers of English, but were also greyhound trainers and poets and auctioneers and book dealers and all kinds of things. So that certainly set me up to think, have a go at anything. And, you know, you don't need to sort of be restricted to think, well, I am this in life and that's all I'm ever going to be. Um, but I'd say in the business world, really, I've learned quite a lot from bad managers and people that haven't necessarily been great in that, you know, you can take just as much from those situations as you can from the good managers as well. Um, I think it can help you know how you want to then be in terms of managing teams. It can help you sort of look at, oh, well, that wasn't necessarily the best way to get results from me. So how else could they have done it? And that kind of thing. Um, I had a really good manager at L'Oreal that I, I did compare her to your Alex Ferguson. I think Louis on a podcast that we did recently, didn't I? But Gail Tate um, was the general manager of L'Oreal Paris, the person who recruited me to L'Oreal. And um, she was great because I think what you see particularly at this sort of stage in business is there's a lot of people that are at the top levels of their job, be it in sales, marketing, et cetera, that learned their craft prior to digital. And they go two ways. There's either the people that know that they don't know about digital. And so they are open to learn it from their team. They're open to go and, you know, do the training and speak to the people around them. And then there are the people that are worried that, by not knowing about this, it's going to make them look weak. And so they don't admit to it, but they also don't sort of address it. Um, so Gail was definitely the former and she now works for Google. So she's super duper digital now, but um, yeah, she was, she was great in terms of kind of giving her team their heads and letting them get on with things, but was there to support them and give them uh, advice and tools when they needed it. Yep, thanks, Kate and Louis. Maybe just one small follow-up question on mentors. Do you have any advice for our audience, both live and our podcast listeners later on, on what sort of mentors should we be looking for? I mean, it's not always, uh, we don't always need to, I guess, find famous mentors in a sense, right? They're, they're, it really depends on our needs. But do you have any general advice on, yeah, again, sort of people should we be looking for? I think you I'd go for a mixture of people if you can. I mean, obviously there, there can be sort of formal mentoring programs, um, but also there can just be people, whether it's lecturers or a boss that you've got, or, you know, someone else in your life that can be useful for particular areas. I think um, it can be quite interesting to be being mentored by someone that doesn't have anything in common in terms of what you're doing. So for example, um, there's a program called Career Ready, which is for sort of six form age kids. Um, and I'm a mentor for a girl who is studying biology, psychology and sociology. So I've, I've not studied any of those topics. But in terms of her thinking about, you know, preparing to go to uni or what she wants to do in her career next or whatever, it's quite useful to be chatting together because I'm coming at it from a completely different perspective. I'm not sort of weighed down by well, this is how you have to study sociology or whatever. So it maybe gives her a different view. So I think the more different people that you can be connecting with and engaging with, you never know where 
their background might still give you a sort of analogy or something. I mean, even, you know, working with Louis, like he says, we've got very different backgrounds, but I learn a huge amount from him in terms of different perspectives on things and, you know, ways of dealing with stuff and it is quite random to occasionally get compared to footballers in odd ways, but uh, quite fun at the same time. But yeah. Thanks so much for that, Kate. Um, so now I think maybe we're going to move on to talk a little bit about the differences in your, the different members who use Access Stars. I mean, to start that off, um, so you said mostly you have football players, but you also have some rugby and cricketers. Have you noticed any differences in the approach to career planning um, for players during their careers in these different sports? And are there any of the sports in which the approach stands out in particular? I think there's, there's a lot of commonalities in terms of, I suppose there's a, there's a commonality in terms of mindset for a lot of particularly athletes in that, um, you know, by not wanting to sort of, if you're an athlete, regardless of what you're doing, you're there to win whatever field you're in and you're going to train and you're going to work hard and you're going to win and you don't think, I might lose this because that's not going to help you in terms of your mindset and your approach. But that also means that you're not necessarily wired to be planning for the future financially either, because contemplating that you might run out of money by the time you're 32 sort of falls into the thing that you've trained yourself not to do in terms of the way that you would train for your sport. So I think there's commonalities there. Um, we do see differences between male and female athletes in that female athletes don't have the same sort of infrastructure and support in their sport so they actually you know like a lot of our rugby members are already running their own businesses as well as playing rugby for their country as well as for a domestic team because they just don't earn enough to not be able to be working you know so we've got rugby players that are also doctors and firefighters or running their own marketing agencies all kinds of things so I suppose they have to think about things earlier because they have no option but to um but then we've got other female footballers who've lived both sides of it like they were in the game when it wasn't very well funded and now they're playing in the FA Women's Super League and playing for England and getting equal pay to the England men and and so they're then falling into some of the pitfalls that male footballers fall into. So it's quite, we've got a few that sort of span, like they remember what it was like, but now they're more in the same sort of field as men. Oh. Louis, have you got any other thoughts on that? No, that's, that's pretty much it. I think there is like definitely, uh, yeah, like sequel logic um, patterns where people behavior is, is drive by uh, certain type of like uh, ego uh, taboo protection so all those things are really hard for them to actually uh, come up uh, and, and say the word help or saying the, the word actually uh, I don't understand so all those things are it's, it's quite tough whether you are a, a, a sportsman or an artist I think that's mm -hmm. is what uh, we, we are trying to solve and get them surrounded uh, by people uh, like them, uh, get them in front of like people who understand that they are under threat with their reputation. So, because yes, any, any company or brand won't like to have a bad rating. I don't think so. So what we, we trying to, to do uh, is to help everybody. So we help in terms of men, uh, mentors as well inside the platform that those guys can pick some like retired players at some point and may chat to those guys and say, you know what, uh, what do you think about this? And there is no gloves uh, taken or yeah, I'm going to say something nice because I want to get a piece of work. No, I'm going to say to you, to your face that you're an idiot um, and you should be not doing those uh, silly stuff which is not going to be the case even from maybe your parents or family members because they know how important you are from the family. So 
this is basically why the community is so unique um, uh, in some way because the, the, those mentors or those consultants, I mean, they don't have the same power. A consultant will say to you, based on his expertise, it's fine. But having someone like Rio Ferdinand telling you how to actually walk out uh, to build a brand, you will listen. If you tell you, oh, you have to focus on your football because you've been really bad, you will listen. Um, I mean, like if maybe your parents or friend or whatever saying to you, you, you tend to be a bit arrogant in some way, you know, and say, ah, don't worry, I'm going to be fine. So this is the pattern that we see. And the more data we collect, the more understanding of those things, the more help that we get from real experts to actually expose that and address this. I think we will be uh, really an important platform because we're going to have like a lot, lot of solution, maybe not all, because uh, certain solution work well for with uh, one, one profile, but not for, with everybody. And we know that there is differences. We want to help uh, women's sports, uh, for example. And we know that if we don't educate the men as well, as me, I need to be educated at certain views, maybe get at others. Um, I need to understand. Uh, if I don't understand, I may not say the right words in public. I will say, oh, maybe I don't think that it's very important. Kate and other people can explain, yes, it is. Oh, okay. Now I get the right example. Now we can address it. And those things are things we are learning on the ground. Yeah. Really, that's a really interesting point, the difference in structure between the male sports stars and women's sports stars, where the industries may not be has developed to the same level um, and another sort of comparison so if we look at really successful sports stars so um, for example within football so when I say successful in not necessarily in their sports careers but outside that so we have the likes of Gerard Piquet who um, is a co-founder of Cosmos Holding a sports group and they're going to transform the Davis Cup um, international tennis competition Matteo Flamini um, is a holder in GF Chemicals, GF Biochemicals, and Zlatan and David Beckham, amongst others, have really big personal brands. So obviously, Axis Stars have started to um, address the lack of support, but here are some people who have done really, really well. And do you think these success stories that go against the norm, are they due to you know, better support, a more privileged upbringing, or do you think there's something else at play, maybe? I think it's certainly about having the right... Go on, sorry. Will you start? No, okay. um, about having the right team around them and being... Um, kind of looking out for opportunities right from an early stage. I mean, uh, you know, someone else who's got a great team around him at the moment is Marcus Rashford, for example, and the sort of things that he's been able to do because he's got that support around him. Um, and that is where it comes down to... Um, as Louis was saying earlier, in terms of being able to like evaluate who the right person is to work with from an early age is a bit of a hit and miss decision currently, um, depending on what the team is that you're signing for. And obviously the people that you've quoted there were all at top level teams where they were probably getting exposure to better quality advisors and being able to evaluate it, but that isn't the case for everyone. So that's where Access Stars comes in, in terms of straight away being able to give them a bit more of a platform to evaluate different options and build the right team around them. On the, on the same time, you have like, by having the community, wherever the project that you have, you, you will feel like you, you're not that much exposed um, because you have like maybe the, like let's say the actual community behind you. So, some will have foundation, some will have like nice uh, little project and having like certain discussion, like, like simple discussion with the, the community and you see the comments and all that can reinforce you or give you the confidence. And sometimes, uh, you know, people will come uh, say about a story about how you create a foundation. First, we will try to help you to do it. So you make less mistakes. And at the same time, you can't be exposed as much because there is like maybe 10 or 15 other supporters who are stars. And so you're not only one name, maybe sometimes it could be exposed and maybe people will look 
for anything goes going wrong, that won't be the case anymore. So all those things are really uh, useful. And and in terms of like uh, those big names, uh, as like uh, uh, Flamini, but the Zlatan and, and and David Beckham, they are icons. They are, you know, they are like the biggest sportsmen. So they have the biggest platforms to do it. But are we sure that as well there is like let's say when I say smaller players, but with like maybe less success or less influence in the way that uh, they've been uh, followed, um, they still can do amazing things. Uh, they, they can do that by having the right support, having the, the right confidence to do it, um, having the, the, the right, I would say, um, let's say the, the, the skills. So having the skills and the consistency about like getting the information out. Yes, you build a brand. And right now, it's really hard because uh, the society doesn't like uh, athletes to speak uh, about anything else than what they do on the field. They just, they just don't like it. Um, we can't, well, we see it a bit more, but we can't really comment on what happened politically, for example, tends to say, oh yeah, stay in your bubble, you know, you don't know the problems and all that. So we are here to actually change those things in a way and give a better platform for athletes to, to be representative and say, listen, we have a voice, we are human beings as well, we are, we are parents, we, we can be entrepreneurs and, and we can do good things as well. And if we help correctly, everybody who is a, a, a fan um, could be a, as well uh, our first customers or our first supporters uh, because we can do this. And, and I think uh, some of the stars don't, not believe, but they, they don't do it by themselves because they get overwhelmed by, that's why I say the, the society, make them just athletes or make them just artists in some way. We want to change that. So this is something uh, kind of uh, brand new. Yeah. Thanks, Louis and Kate. I think that's a very empowering and encouraging statement. Perhaps just one last question for, uh, uh, from us to close the day. What is next for Axis Stars? And also just to pick up one question from the audience, perhaps when you elaborate about your future strategy, could you also share a bit about the main differentiating factor between you and perhaps your other competitors in the same you know, arena? Do you want to go, Louis, or shall I? Yeah, go on. Uh, so in terms of, we don't really have like a, a straight competitor. There isn't anything like Axis Stars. There are elements of what we do that exist. So there are, you know, companies that are doing education and supporting for when athletes retire. There are companies that connect athletes with brands. There are concierge services. There are sort of family offices, those kind of things. But there isn't um, anything really like this in terms of there being a self-service access for stars to be able to network with each other and find all these different services and get education. So, um, that's both a good thing and a bad thing, I guess, in terms of if you're going into something to not have a true competitor, it means you're the ones leading the way and you might get some people that can uh, get in our slipstream or whatever, but at the same time, um, we've got to sort of introduce it for the first time and explain it to people. Uh, so in terms of what's next, I guess, uh, certainly growing out the community, finding out more from the people that are starting to use it in terms of the sports that we're not so um, sort of experienced in, in terms of services that you might need in cricket, athletics, tennis, Formula One, that kind of thing. So learning more there, learning more with our partners in terms of the businesses that are in there and making sure that it's working for them. So just lots of kind of testing and learning and looking at the data and the insight and then adding new functionality and seeing how that goes and constantly evolving. We're um, raising funds at the moment as well, which obviously will mean that we can do further development in the future. We're going to do um, crowdfunding open to stars so that it becomes for them by them in terms of obviously with every individual star that invests in it, they're bringing their network in it kind of de-risks the whole investment for everyone really so that's um something that will be happening this side of christmas so lots to be getting on with louis i've probably missed a lot of things i don't know you didn't so yeah the the 
the best um, thing about uh, Axis Stars, uh, let's say, for, for us is to see um, the evolution of, uh, yes, the, the, those members, the more they get um, really excited about the information they see and all this is uh, just an amazing feeling. So this is what we, we really are looking for. So there is no much uh, to hide from what Kate has, uh, has said. Okay. Thank you very much, Kate and Louis, for joining us on Crew Talks. And that was really a great conversation. And I feel like we have a much better insight into why Access Start is needed and exactly how it works. And also, thank you very much to everyone in the audience for joining us and listening in. And we hope to see you at future Crew Tech events. Thank you. Bye.